Hey guys, welcome to or welcome back. This is Instant Ramen. This is a little bit of the new version from uh, off of Noodle Time. Uh, we're inviting guests from our opponents during the, the preview week of the game. And, uh, you know, we just want to give us a, a quick roundup with our opponent and learn about our opponent a little bit more, like kind of like we did last year. You know, we got Herman here. Herman, what's going on, buddy? All is well. All is well. Same people, different name for the segment, but we do we keeping it real with our guest tonight. As always, bro. And speaking of our guests, we got Fabian Wrinkle speak uh, holding down for San Jose. Sorry if that's I know that's not your version, but <laughs> hold it down. Yeah, I think you got uh, with Area Sports Net still. Uh, man, what's going on, bro? How you doing, brother? Hey, man, I have I have some love for Houston. I know Quakes fans probably don't want to hear that, but. Um, I, uh, I, you know, I get to interview a lot of players from Houston. So Fafa, I got to interview him last year. And then, um, also I got to talk to, I believe this year, I'm trying to get, uh, Franco Escobar on the, on the show. So I got a lot of love for, for Houston. Nice, bro. I hope you get that one, man. And when, let us know when you, do, I mean, obviously we'll find out when you do. So we'll be looking, we'll be, really be interested in hearing that one. That's going to be uh, Franco Escobar. I hadn't got to play for us, but one game, but he's kind of still sitting on an injury. But, you know, hopefully maybe he'll get the interview while he's sitting out and just rub his knee for him and get him going. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. 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 I always massage us down here in Houston, dude. <laughs> you know, Quakes fans say yeah. you don't have four ships, you know. So Houston is kind of like a little brother, I guess you know. <laughs> <laughs> or, or or they get the or they get to say the zombie quakes, you know. So it's kind of like the quakes too. The, the zombie quakes. I remember that from last year. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, all right, brother uh, Herman, you want to start us off, man? Yes. So uh, Fabian, we have a couple questions for you. We'll run down and and. We hope that these questions help Dynamo fans get familiarized with how San Jose is doing this season and what to yeah. expect for our game this upcoming week. So I'll just start off right off the bat. So San Jose last year finished last in the West. Uh, we were close in the standings, one point below Houston. <laughs> Hate to admit that, but we were kind of neighbors in that aspect. What were the biggest issues for the team to transition from Almeida to the new guy, the new head coach, Alex Covello. Yeah, so I, I got to know Alex Covello uh, a lot. I mean, I was one of the only reporters covering when, you know, Almeida left because a lot of people left with Almeida, Almeida as well. Mm -hmm. So um, Covello, I felt like he did a great job. Um, if the season started, because I remember the Quakes lost like seven straight or they dropped a lot of points at the beginning of the season. And if Covello started at the beginning of the season and he kept the same points per game, the Quakes would have made the playoffs. So with that roster, with how depleted that roster was, it was kind of impressive what Alex Covello did. So I like Lucci Gonzalez. I think he's the, he's the right coach for the San Jose Earthquakes. But I feel like Alex Covello deserved a shot as well with the full lineup, with the full transfer window, um, and some new guys coming in. The biggest issue for the Quakes last year was their defensive woes. I mean, they let in, I think, the third most goals in the league last year. And – they brought in some guys, but it was a little too late. They brought in Miguel Trauco, who's an international player for Peru. They brought in Carlos Acapo, who played many years in La Liga um, and just recently was out because of an injury, and then they didn't want to resign him, so the Quakes kind of got a deal for him. And then they also brought in Rodriguez as a ball-playing center back uh, that was playing at Gremio. So, again, highest level of play in Brazil. And we also brought in a guy named Daniel, who I believe comes from Independiente, um, I might be wrong on that, but he comes from the Brazilian league as well. Um, and a goalie that maybe a lot of fans weren't, were actually kind of happy he's leaving Brazil. Um, but in, in the quakes kind of world, maybe they didn't need a goalie, but if you have a problem with goals going in, you kind of try to fix up anything you can. And then it was going to look like we have a solid back line. Nathan, who is our anchor in the back line goes down with the ACL injury in a preseason match. Then the Quakes go ahead and go get Jonathan Mensa on the real cheap. Another great move by our GM, in my opinion. He brings in a guy with MLS Cup experience. He's a champion, a person that's played for Ghana for under 200K. So, again, great move, in my opinion, uh, to sure up that back line. As you can see, we're playing. We've had two clean sheets in the last matches. Or, uh, excuse me, two in the three last matches. And it's been, it's been a good ride for the Quakes. And defensively, I think they look a lot better this year. 
So, so with the transition of the team from this going to this year, do you obviously you now have a new coach in Luchi Gonzalez. Uh, some people were kind of high on it. Some people were kind of low. I mean, how, how do you, how do y'all feel? And how are you able to lure him away and to come into San Jose too at the same time? Yeah, to be honest, San Jose's pipeline is really good at this moment. Um, it, it's going to, we have Cade Cal, we have Nico Sakiris, we have Cruz Medina, all three players that have been on, you know, national player watch really. Right. Um, so it's enticing to come in here, sell them for a high profit and then have this under your resume. In my opinion, I think is system set up for him to kind of, possibly have a stepping stone in us um, if he can make it work this time around he, he he alludes to maybe playing the kids a little too much in in Dallas so this time around I think he's doing a little bit of a better job not playing the kids so much um, he's playing more of the re- veterans the guys he can lean on um, so I think the reason why we lured him away is because honestly the roster wasn't horrible um, I think the Quakes roster is actually pretty good now with the defensive upgrades Um, The only problem we really, really lack is depth. And um, I think a lot of teams are realizing that that this year with all the games they're going to have to play. And that's, Mm -hmm. that's a fact for every team league wide. Big schedule this year. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you touched on it already, but currently y'all sit with seven points and in playoff. I mean, for us that we've been below that playoff line, like, yeah, we (laughs) were, We're already, we're already, you know, dreaming about sneaking up in there. <laughs> so above the playoff line, um, you you touched on it a little bit, but are you comfortable with Lucci's leadership? And does the team or the fans need more time to be convinced? Yeah. Well, the the whole thing. I actually made a tweet the other day about us having the worst attendance in the league this last weekend. Um, we should not be the worst in the league in attendance. That's for sure. So I was saying we're in a playoff spot. It got roasted a bit, you know. It's only five games in, but but hey, spot, you know. So um, you look at teams like the LA Galaxy that they can't even score a goal. So it's just like I think the Quakes have done well when they're at home. Um, unfortunate they didn't get this win versus Toronto, but you know, a, still a clean sheet and a draw at home is not the end of the world. As long as you take take away some points on the road and. If you're not playing in St. Louis where 50,000 people want to be in that stadium, maybe you, you sneak away some points, you know? So um, I think this team is poised because the playoffs are bigger now. I, I think this, I think this team will be at a playoff spot and hopefully trying to try for a home playoff game. But I think now they changed it so that it's, you get a home playoff game no matter what. So um, I think they changed it to a two playoffs, two, two game system for each playoff at least. Hmm. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! That next round where it's a uh, best of three, yeah, so. best of three. So you do get a whole game, yeah. Yeah. And you know, last year and kind of continuing to this year, y'all had a very potent attack with you know with Ebed. Hold on, Ebusi have Abosi, Cal Espinosa. I mean, can you can y'all keep it up this season and 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 be that potent attack that was very dangerous last year? And a lot of teams were afraid to play y'all. Yeah, so to keep it a little easier for Houston fans, if if, if Abobasi's hard, you can always say Jebo. Just J- Jeremy and Abobasi Jebo. together. We call him Jebo out here. Okay. Um, and they do in Portland as well. So that's always a nice way. Um, so the attack is 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 going crazy right now. Let me tell you this. The whole – honestly, Toronto did a good job coming in. They kind of did a – I want to say like just kind of parked the bus. And they parked the bus on top of Christian Espinoza. At the moment, Christian Espinoza is our best player, and he's our best player by far. Let me just pull up some stats I had for him this last weekend. He's number one in chances created with 18. He's number one in big chances created. He's number one in expected assists. And he's number one in expected assists per 90, which is 0.63. So, again, mm. this guy is the guy to watch out for if you're if you're a Houston fan, right? Um, this is the guy who they are funneling every single thing through him to try to get, you know, on the board or try to start something. If you – I want every Houston fan to watch his play this next weekend. Um, every single cross he's been doing hits something. It either hits a, an opposing player or it hits a, our player. You never see a cross go over the head when it's Espinoza. He likes to hit the ball really hard. So sometimes you get some deflections and you get some pinballing. Um, and Jeremy Abobasi, what he's really good at is barely adjusting the the shot, really. So 
Christian Espinoza shoots almost with that same force, and then he just kind of lets it gl- uh, excuse me lets it glide past him, and so it, it it gets into the back of the net. So really, that's what Jeremy Bobis is really good at. He's he's good at, at reacting a lot. Um, so Jeremy Bobis is also good in the air. So I would say yes, they're able to keep it up this year. Um, the only thing, Cade Cal is having a little bit of a tough start to the season. I know a lot of people probably know the name Cade Cal because they watched that U.S. game versus Serbia, and he just balled out, right? He's not doing that yet with the Quakes, but I think it's because they're going ahead and feeding the hot hand with Espinoza. Again, if a, you know if Dennis Bowanga wasn't in this league, I think Espinoza would have a good shot at this. Or Thiago Almada, if those two weren't in the league, maybe Espinoza has a good shot at being the early season MVP. You know, a real quick follow up to that. Espinosa doesn't he have two bangers already to start the season? Exactly. Yeah. So uh, if if I'm mistaken, he has. I know he has one already versus uh, Colorado, where it kind of dips. It takes a deflection, yeah. just dips right under the under the bar. Um, but I'm not so sure on the on the other goal. But he had a banger um, versus Colorado. That's for sure. And he's very very capable of shooting. Um, a lot of Quakes fans wanted him to shoot a little more, and we're seeing that this season, right? So um, he takes yeah. a penalty for us too. So um, he's definitely – he's chasing history at the moment. Uh, he only needs three assists to pass up the all-time assist leader in San Jose. So they're funneling him. They want him to get that record as soon as possible. Uh, let me let me ask you this. Uh, it's, a, it's a young season to date, but if you had to pick and – you, and you got some to pick from the, the highest point and then – also the lowest point performance wise uh, in this young season. Yeah. I mean, um, to be honest, I think the home games are, have been a really, really high plus, um, but the lowest of the lows, I kind of have to point to that because it's really, really bad. St. Louis. I mean, St. Louis, we lost zero to three. So, <clears throat> I mean, every team that's played them so far feels the same way, but man, our young team crumbled when we were in a stadium that was just jam packed. Like I said, if there was 50,000 seats available, they would have sold it out and they would have all been rocking. So um, I was talking a little bit to Jonathan Mensa, who's kind of like, you know, a good veteran in the locker room. It's something that the, this young team has to learn how to play in that type of environment. But I think that's probably the lowest of the lows, I would say. Um, and the highest of the highs has to be the opening opening um, season opener home win versus Vancouver. Um, because sellout crowd in San Jose and then, all of a sudden, you you get a goal kind of kind of last minute maybe, and then it's a fun time. Everybody's having fun in San Jose. That was a comeback win too, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then also another low was when Thiago Amada or Diego Amada just had a- <laughs> <laughs> right. But again, these are two teams like Almada Team Almada FC, and then uh, St. Louis. Those two teams are just running through everybody. So it's like. Okay, you know, as a Quakes fan, okay, you know, you're beating the teams you're supposed to beat, but then you're losing to the superstar teams, right? So it's something that it's like, uh, you know, we, we could be in a worse spot. Hey, we get to see Seattle. Uh, sorry, St. Louis with a test against Seattle here coming up shortly. We'll see if they're going to keep that run going and live off that high any longer. Right, right. <laughs> Someone, someone's going to knock them down. But, hey, men, earlier you mentioned, and I had this question actually saved for you, you, I saw your tweet where you were asking about the attendance and is there what 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 can your fans do about that attendance? And did, did is there a remedy? Is there something that y'all come up with? Is it yeah. – is it, the way the way the Bay Area works, um, this is for a lot of older sports fan in the area. I mean, the te- the area is just has so much so much pride in their in their teams, but those teams are very established. Mm-hmm. San Jose, San Francisco Giants won two championships recent or three, excuse me, recently. The Warriors have won three. The 49ers are always in the Super Bowl. Um, the Sharks were really good for a long time. So it's just – it's a very hard market to, to even break into. I mean, the Oakland A's, storied, storied franchise. You see people rocking A's gear in Asia. In Japan. I lived in Japan, so I saw A's gear in Asia all the time. But they can't even sell 500 tickets, you know. So it's it's <laughs> something that, you know, the Bay Area, if you're not winning, if you're not good, or if you don't have any ambition, or if you don't like, you know, John Fisher, which is the owner of the, the Quakes – you're not going to go to games because he's the owner of the A's as well. And, and you know, mm. that's out the bag. A's don't sell any tickets. They don't have any ambition. They don't have any desire to, to help Oakland become something on the global scale. 
So that's kind of transferring into the San Jose mindset. And, and it's, it's, it's being noticed by a lot of people. I mean, the attendance was 12,000, but I can tell you right now there was about nine or 8,000 people there. There, there was about 3000 people missing. There's people that were mad that they couldn't transfer their tickets. You know, there's people that couldn't even offer free tickets away. So it's something that a lot of Quakes fans are looking at the Oakland A's situation and thinking like, what's going on? Cause they might move to Vegas. So I know MLS wants to put something in Vegas. Fisher always says that he doesn't want to move the Quakes to Vegas. So that's something to keep an eye on if you're a Quakes fan. I know this is like, this is conspiracy theory talk, but it's something that Quakes fans are definitely keeping an eye on because the best situation I think is another Columbus Austin situation where the, the owner moves to Vegas with the Oakland A's and then the Quakes stay in the Bay area with a new owner. And that's what everybody wants. Everybody wants Joe Lake of the owner of the Warriors to buy the, the Quakes. And he, he actually tried to buy them, but then Fisher said no, because this investment's just, it's going to blow up in the next five years. And he unfortunately knows that. Right. So next five or 10 years, I would say um, what, cause he knows Messi's on the brink of coming. And, and if Messi comes, every stadium sells out no matter what team you field out there. Right. So it, it's something that, you know, unfortunately the Quakes fans are kind of stuck with it. A lot of radio shows I hear don't even cover the Quakes. I'll be honest with you. The only ones that do are the ones that are funded by the team. Uh, Telemundo does a great job covering the Quakes, but again, different market, right? They understand soccer. They know soccer, but that's why the Apple TV deal was so big for the Quakes, in my opinion, because I, I'm a reporter for the team and I couldn't watch the team because I don't have cable, right? So it was like, it's something where CSN, uh, well, we have the Comcast sports net out here for the Bay area. They would throw us on the third channel because the A's and the giants are playing. And then they would, st- and then we would have to watch the Quakes game on de- tape delay. So another thing that fans were saying is like, "Hey, we can watch the games now. So we're not going to be out there in the sixty degree weather, which to Californians that's like negative twenty. So that's that's probably something about the attendance as well. It's pretty cold. So um, uh, a lot of I think accessibility to the game is a lot easier now. So less people are, are inclined. But also another big thing about the attendance that a lot of fans are telling me is that they don't like the seven thirty start times. So to get from San Francisco to San Jose takes about an hour. Game ends around 10 30, 10 o'clock. You get to SF around 11 30, which is pretty late. And there's no public transportation. So you're going to go sober, right? You can't take a drink. You can't, you can't really do anything. Mm. That's the hardest thing about it. Cause finding an Uber at that time on a Saturday night is like paying, you're paying like 300, $200 just to go home from the earthquake game. Oh, that's so that's a horrible add. problem. Yeah, ahead, there's, there's a lot of issues. Um, the Apple TV deal is kind of like a double-edged sword, right? It's good where we get access. Like, I can finally watch a game if I if I don't have cable. But at the same time, it's too easy that people are like, eh, you know, maybe I don't want to go to this. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a, just a follow-up to the attendance answer. Have y'all noticed uh, where – because with the Oakland Ace, it's so apparent that he's not trying to invest any single penny into the team. But have y'all noticed changes where the owner's kind of like, okay, I'm just going to keep the budget short as possible and just keep this team just afloat so I can keep my investment growing in valuation and I can sell when I get happy? Or is that just the 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 fear, the fear that, hey – He's gonna want to move it to Vegas. I would say it's kind of, it's kind of like a lot of fans actually ha- are scared that the Houston situation. It's funny that I'm talking about this on a Houston pod, right? Right. The right. Situation is gonna happen again. Um, but that's kind of like in the back of their minds. I mm-hmm. think in the front of their minds is like, hey, Houston has Hector Herrera. Like, where's ours? You know, like we just we just spend our we spent our highest transfer fee for Carlos Gresso, but. He's not Hector Herrera, you know, like my boy Hector Herrera has like 1.4 million followers on Instagram. Like he's not a superstar. <laughs> I, and like, I hate to say it. A lot of Quakes fans want that guy. Like how are you expecting us to compete with the other two teams in LA when they're bringing bail on a TAM contract, you know, or they're bringing in For real. A TAM contract. Right. So it's like, you know, we could, we could maybe start selling a pipe dream. You know, we're only five hours away from LA. You should come play for us, you know? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know a way to to try to get these fans back in the stadium without 
spending a little bit of more cash. I hate, I, I feel a bit greedy because the quicks aren't the last, they're not last in funding. They're, they're in, they're in the middle. He had John Fisher, the owner had a quakes two team last year, which comes hundred percent out of pocket. So it's not like he's making money on that. But again, I think he sees that as more of an investment thing for the pipeline. Cause at the time the pipeline is looking really good, um, really profitable. So it's just, and, and a lot of players, a lot of fans actually get mad. I mean, you're going to sell Cade Cal for what? Okay. $6 million, but he's not going to put that back on the team. You know, that's what, that's mm-hmm. what they're thinking. They're like, oh, he's just going to pocket that so he can, I don't know, fund his A stadium in, in Vegas. Right. So it's something that it leaks into the Quakes fan base. Um, the Quakes, I like their marketing. They win, they win a lot of award with their social media, um, but it's hard to get a San Francisco to go to San Jose to watch a game. That's the truth. It's That's hard. what I was going to ask. Yeah. So the, the stadium itself is like in San Jose. So like, like you said, a good quote unquote hour away from San Francisco, the yeah. Bay area. And that's without traffic, right? With traffic, it's right. like an hour and 30 minutes. Yeah. And so, but PayPal park is brand new, you know, it's like not, it's actually 10 years old or it's, it's, oh my it's God. Yeah, it feels it's, new. <laughs> right. It's, it's about 10 years old. So it, it's something where it's like, you know, he actually bought all the land around it too. So it's definitely, it's definitely an investment because you see Roku pop up next to it. You see Yahoo next to it. Right. And he's right. making money by getting those, those big companies. Hey, do you want to be next to a professional stadium? Let, you know, it, it, it's it, he's paying the rent of the office buildings with the draw of being next to a professional stadium, right? So it is an investment. Don't get me wrong; he's he's investing in the land because that land has jumped up in, in value by right. ten times already. So right. he's already made enough money on his investment, and it's just unfortunate that the Quakes fans are in the middle of it. Well, we we hate to hear that, and hopefully that doesn't happen to you. And if it does, it's it's hopefully it's the resolution that you mentioned, where it's another Austin case where he can go to Vegas and y'all get another owner. That way you can keep the Quakes because it's a historic franchise of yeah, the league. Well, the biggest thing, too, in my opinion, and I, and I'm always gonna I'm always gonna receive some flack for this, um, mm-hmm. because I I lived in Japan for two years. I've been a reporter for the Quakes for a while. It's hard to sell San Jose to another country when they don't know anything about San Jose. Right. San Francisco, on the other hand, everybody knows San Francisco. Yes. So you have the San Francisco 49ers that play five minutes away from the Quakes, but they're called San Francisco 49ers. Mm -hmm. So that in the whole history of the earthquakes is not being San Francisco. So it's like these two sides where – the NASL days, they wanted the San Jose Earthquakes to be the San Francisco Earthquakes. And the owner, that was his, like, number one thing. He was not going to call it the San Francisco Earthquakes because he was from San Jose. So it's kind of like now it's, what, four or five decades long of this argument of would the Quakes be more profitable if they were San Francisco? And in my opinion, if you can't even sell out a game versus Toronto on a Saturday at 730, maybe it's – you know, maybe you got to start thinking about you. You're not you're not alienating your fan base if they're already in, alienated. You know, so right. it's it's something to think about. And this NWSL team that's coming into the area is going to play at PayPal Park, but they're going to be called San Francisco something. They're not going to be called San Jose. There you go. So something think about for sure. Yeah, it is definitely something to think about. So I'm not sure if a rebrand's coming or if this team's going to move to Vegas or a lot of Quakes fans kind of feel it. I mean, you can tell like once. They sell this pipe, this pipeline away, like Cruz Medina, Cade Cal, and Nico. What's going to happen with this team? That's what everybody's kind of thinking about in their back of their mind. But at the moment, they're thinking about Lucci and and um, and what's going on with the team right now. Sorry, this is a loaded conversation. No, 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 no. It's it's good. And and you touched on you basically made a nice transition to my next question. Anyways, hopefully y'all get a resolution where both parties win. You know, right. don't don't get the taken away from you i can't imagine going through that twice as a fan base but you did talk about that he does fund and he being the owner fund the san jose two team yeah he does Uh, yeah so that's that's something that lafc didn't have last year so it's like you know he is investing money into it you know so we got to give him credit there right so y'all recently had a good performance against la galaxy those this past week and i believe uh your first round uh pick from the super draft uh was men of the match Mr. Oh, well, that was last year. Yeah, Oseni Buddha was our first pick last year. Um, and uh, yeah, Daniel Mooney, the the first round pick of this year, 
was playing too, and he played well too. Um, the biggest thing about MLS Next Pro for the Quakes is they had a superstar player in the league last year. Um, his mm-hmm. name was Max Arvston. He he went for the draft and he got drafted by Columbus. He then scored this last weekend for the Columbus Crew. So the talent, was, you. right? The talent was lost. So now they're kind of looking at Quakes too as like, oh, maybe we should pay a little more attention to this. Let's invest a little bit more by playing our number one guys and maybe, you know, picking up some talent here and there. But they're they're kind of, I would say, ticked off that that happened to them. And maybe the rules change in the next coming year so that doesn't happen. But, yeah, Max Arfson was a Quakes 2 player, came up through the local academies in the Bay Area or in the Central Valley, which is uh, an hour or two away. And he went to go play for Columbus, and now he's a he's a player for them and, and scored a goal for them. Okay, so let's go back to what you do have here in San Jose, though. So what are your hopes and expectations for last year's first-round pick, Buddha, and this year's? Because if they're still playing in 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 the San Jose, those team, you know, when when do we see them get that call up? Especially if you are playing embracing the youth movement. Yeah, let me tell you this: Osedi Buddha was the best player on the pitch by far. I mean, mm-hmm. the LA Galaxy, too, were missing a lot of players because they actually called up a lot to play for their uh, Portland Timbers match. Paul Judd, which was their goal scorer last year in USL that had 17 goals, actually started his first MLS match for the Galaxy. So they were playing a lot of MLS next guys, which were guys that were 16, 15, 14. So a guy like Osani Buda, who finished his Stanford degree, a uh, place for the Quakes now, was just bossing these kids around, and it was – it was a fun time because you see, you see an actual professional soccer player, you know, go up against a lot of these LA Galaxy fifteen or sixteen year olds, you and of course, and of course, he's doing tricks. He's he's like spinning. It, it, he he was balling. I mean, he had he was player of the match for us. So um, it was something where this it, he's he's very talented, but maybe he needs a little more confidence, and and that quakes two stint maybe helps him with a little bit of confidence. I would say. It was unexpected. Nobody expected him to be there because he was already getting minutes with the first team. Well, it's something to build off with your second team to your first team, and depending on how the season goes and how the rest of those players go. But now we're traveling to San Jose this weekend. And, of course, last every year is different. So, so last year we, we beat y'all twice, won 4-3 to three in a thriller here in Houston, uh, beat y'all 2-1 to one last year in San Jose. You know, so uh, what's your, you know, expectations for this game this weekend? How, what, what, are you, what are you looking at? And, and maybe give a score prediction if you feel like it. Yeah, look, the Quakes, they really need all their players back. I mean, Gresso's on international duty. Miguel Trout goes on international duty. And then uh, Jamiro Montero, which is our X Factor, is on international duty. If these guys get back in time for this match, rest, you know, have a good rest and play a full 90, I think the Quakes should get this W. Um, if they're not there, I think the Quakes have a harder time, um, especially without Montero. I mean, Montero, they played four halves without Montero, and they haven't scored a goal. So it's something that this high-powered offense really needs, Jameer Montero. And I think we see the Quakes that started the season with Espinosa, Jeremy Bobsey on the board, and Jameer Montero kind of being the architect of everything. Um, but it's going to be – if they're all playing, I think the Quakes are going to score some goals. That's for sure. I would say I, I want to say I like Houston. They might not be. They might. They might be caught off a little off guard because looking at the last two quakes, kind of um, the last two quakes uh, games, they haven't really scored. So they they might get a couple goals in. OSG, I got a question for you. Basically, can you summarize quickly what we play because? I started thinking we played a four three three. Now we're four four two, and well, we're it, it, results it, and it works. Yeah. So what the hell are we playing, man? So it, it transitions two way. When we're attack, we're doing a four three three sort of. We're pushing up, and we're and we're either playing over the top or we're countering, depending on who we're playing against and what style that we're playing. But when we do we do defend, we drop back and we're in a four four two, and mm-hmm. and uh, I e like. Uh, Saturday's game. We had Brooklyn Rain starting in the absence of Coco Karaskia. And we don't and we're like you. We don't know if Coco Karaskia, he's the only one that's gonna be on international duty. We don't know if he's gonna be back in time. Ivan Franco just had a kid and he went down to Paraguay to, to mm-hmm. celebrate the birth of his baby. We're not sure if he's gonna be back in time to play this weekend either. Those are two key players that we like. But Brooklyn Rain stood in very, very well. The eighteen year old got his first professional start, MLS start, and and played very well, almost 
I think he played 75 minutes, looked very well, came in, but he was playing high with Baird, who's our striker, instead of yeah. our DP, Sebastian Fidea, for some friggin' reason. We're still oh, argued. Argue. Product, all right? He's coming home. Yeah. <laughs> Well, hey, hey, whatever. We're, we're arguing and debating and fighting about that this this old time. But so, like when we're defending, Rain stays high with with whoever the striker is going to be, or Coco stays high with whoever the striker is going to be. And then when we're attacking, we go back to the wings where it'd be Bossy or Quinones, who was this weekend. If Franco is going to be back, you'll see Franco and Bossy probably play the wings, and hopefully Sebastian Fideo will be the striker. If 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 he is, probably Barrett will get another friggin' start on the wing. We don't. There's only one person that likes Baird right now, and and nobody else is enjoying Baird. They're not like hating on the guy. He's just not. We're not seeing what we want to see out of the striker. But the same problem. We our final third has been our biggest issue. We we worked a lot of little chemistry after the first two road games. We were. We're, we're, we looked better our last two games. Of course, both of them were at home. We beat our little in-state rivals, little in-state rivals. Uh, we, we won yesterday against NYC in kind of a defensive game, but we, we can't get those actual creative shots. It's actually testing the keeper. Uh, we're, we're making the defense stop us, and, and it's 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 difficult. So if the Quakes are going to be in tune or in touch and, and they're they're actually pressuring our, our you know, our keeper, because our defense has been pretty solid, then yes, I, I'm with y'all. Y'all could come out ahead on this game because we don't know how to finish right now unless That's good. we get a penalty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two of in our favor. We're not used to that. <laughs> yeah, we are not used to that. To be honest with you, if if our not uh, first choice outside backs play, you might get a penalty. So it might, ha- it might happen. So I think it's a big difference. If our guys come back from international duty, huge difference. So well, we're going to take every goal we can get. Yeah, we're going to take no every goal. <laughs> Go ahead, so Arnold. before we wrap up, any any questions uh, you may have for OSG and I? No, I mean we're excited to see Hector Herrera in person. I know there's a lot of uh, Mexican soccer fans out here, um, mm-hmm. but like Matias Almeida said when I asked him last year when uh, Houston got Hector Herrera, he's like, "Oh, that's really good for their coach." Uh, in a way where it made <laughs> headlines, yeah. it made headlines because he's like, "Where's mine?" Exactly. Right. I'm right. Leave right. That. Where's ours? You know. <laughs> so uh, we're salty Quakes fans. We don't get superstars. We have to make them. So Christian Espinoza is the player to look out for. He's going to try to be chasing history. I would say. Um, but no, we're excited. Uh, we're excited to see this Houston team in. Um, I'm excited to, to go to go see all of them because. I got to know them all, a lot of them, so I'm excited for that team to come to San Jose. Well, well Arthur's going to lock down Espinosa in that midfield right there, and he's going to be on the top of the box, and Espinosa may get a shot off. It may get deflected, but we're not going to give him no clear goal. And then Bartlow and Teenage have been have been locking it down right there for the past couple of games. So it's going to be an exciting match, man. Uh, uh, it's always San Jose. We, we go back and forth, and, of course, we have the history – we brought the stars over here, so <laughs> it's it's always fun, bro. So yeah, man. Anything else you got? Any last words? Any shout outs or anything you like to I give? Have to say is we we connect with one thing. We were the only two teams that the MLS goat ever played for, Chris Wondolowski. So uh, mm. hey, that's hey. The <laughs> so we can both yeah. hey, hold it down, and you can say go Quakes if you like Chris Wondolowski. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, go go go, Pat! Go all go all them boys that came over with you, with him, man. So. I, I got that. Uh, I got that replica, man. I can't afford the authentic. Yeah. I don't got my two stars. <laughs> but uh, he's got to tell t- teenager or or uh, yeah, or man. Jerry give you a shirt, man. What's going seriously, on, seriously, dude? Seriously, man. But uh, no, Fabian, it's a pleasure for you to join us, man. Thank you so much. No. Don't forget about us when you make it big time, dude. Not even, not even. No, I appreciate the time <laughs> you guys. No, seriously, it's always a pleasure to be on. I always have a good time talking Houston because it's the, you know, it's 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 the zombie quakes. So I have a, I have a place in my heart for Houston. Uh, but no, thank you guys so much for having me on, and uh, I look forward to linking up for possibly a game in Houston. Yeah, for sure. And uh, tell tell the fans what you do, you know, day to day, and where they can find you and your work. Yeah, thank you guys. Uh, you can find me at Fabian Rankle. Um, I I write for Forbes uh, when it comes to betting on MLS games. Um, so I write like a little preview. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that started with the World Cup, and they were like, "Hey, 
You know, like let's uh, you know, I love me some parlays, dude. (laughs) I got a funny story about this. If you have a LinkedIn, not everybody's spam, so make sure you check your messages because sometimes you get a real job offer in those. (laughs) So, so, uh, uh, yeah. So, and 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 make a LinkedIn. If you don't have one yet, make one because you can get some some money. Um, but like I said, uh, I I I write for Forbes when it comes to betting on MLS games uh, and soccer games. So exciting stuff. Um, maybe I do a Houston um, uh, betting preview sometime soon. And then I also am a reporter. I covered an MLS Cup with Area Sports Network. So I, I have a lot of quotes from players all around the league. I actually have Houston quotes all the time because um, we try to always give Houston some more coverage. Um, so, again, thank you guys so much for having me on. But it's a pleasure of mine. So, Homer, why don't you walk us out while we say thank you to to Fabian and appreciate your time tonight, bro. I know this was kind of quick, but, man, it's always fun talking to you, and we hope you can do it some more, and we'll do it for the uh, whenever we play y'all here in Houston. But, Herman, you know how to do it, right? Yes, sir. Just like Sopa Maruchan, thank you for joining us on Instant Ramen. Me and OSG, we hold it down for H-Town. Fabian, thank you so much. Our love on this end. But hopefully we steal some points this week. <laughs> hey, noodles, right? Over, over Monachan, like, let's be real. Hey, yes. <laughs> st- st- H is up and stay noodle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Good stuff.